Welcome to Enjoy. I'm Blair French. And today, we're off to enjoy the kitchen. What do you enjoy? Come on. On today's Veterans Day episode, we're going to learn to clean a gun, salute, and properly thank a veteran. Hello and welcome to Enjoy. I'm Blair French and today it's all about exploring, eating, and of course, enjoying. Okay, since LA traffic is notoriously horrible, we're gonna steamroll right over it. in Petaluma and we're off to enjoy the Veterans Day Parade. at the Veterans Day Parade, which I understand is the largest north of the Golden Gate. And I have a special guest here. Tell me your name. Um, Mae West, honey. <laughs> Are you enjoying yourself today? I enjoy myself every day. I saw you dancing earlier. Do you enjoy dancing? Oh, I love to dance, yeah. Should we salute to the veterans? That's it. Do you have a special message for the veterans? Yeah, I love y'all. I am here with veteran Richard Bergeron. What are you enjoying today? I'm enjoying the weather and also all the vets and the people who support us. I, I agree. Well, we salute you and thank you for coming out and enjoying with us. Do you guys know how to do a salute? We're all saluting! Yay! My name is Sergeant First Class James C. Perra. Today is the day we veterans gather to pay respect to service. Let us remember the veterans of the colonial wars, the revolution, which is the only true revolution in the history of the world, the wars of the 1800s, the wars of the 20th century, and today's wars in Iraq, which has since ended, and Afghanistan and other unnamed battlefields around the world. I am now here with Sergeant Jimmy Perra. You are highly decorated over here. I 
a little bit, maybe. I don't know. I think so. I know. <laughs> the best honor is probably the, what my buddies think of me more so than what I wear. What in particular have you enjoyed about today's parade, other than honoring everybody? Is there one thing that stands out for you today that you've just enjoyed? I, just the crowd of the people and the, and the patriotism. It's kind of like a, a Norman Rockwell painting up and down these streets and all the people that are here and they, uh, you know, they're, they're great Americans. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. <laughs> all right. Please tell me your name. Travis Welton Washington, Jr. Well, that's a mouthful. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> what have you enjoyed most about today? Um, just uh, seeing all the people uh, supporting the veterans. and uh, Isn't that wonderful? Yes, it is. It is. It's um, something that our, our country should do more of. It is my great honor and pleasure to introduce to you Colonel Bill Chadwick, who is retired Green Beret and West Point graduate, class of 1974. Today is Veterans Day, so we're here to enjoy and celebrate you. Thank you, Blair. I appreciate the opportunity. Uh, welcome to my backyard. Thank you. <laughs> it is it is uh, Veterans Day. Originally, it was called Armistice Day, uh -huh. and it's the day that the First World War ended, which was called the War to End All Wars. And it happened at 11 minutes after 11 a.m. on the 11th of November, 1918. It's a day for uh, service members to remember their fallen comrades as well as all the people they served with. Right. Well, we certainly appreciate and, and want to thank you for your service to this country. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, Colonel. May I call you Colonel? Sure. You're going to be teaching me today how to clean a gun? That's correct. Okay. All right. Well, let's start. I brought out a couple of revolvers, and they're called revolvers because they have wheels that spin. Mm -hmm. You've got the small one. I've got the 44, the larger pistol. Okay. okay. Very simple, cleaning okay. a weapon. First thing we want to do is we want to make sure that it's, that it's clear, that it has no ammunition in it. And what I've done is I've opened the wheel up so that you can look down. Should I just do as you do? Sure. Go okay. ahead. And you can physically see that there are no rounds. There in, are no rounds. In the weapon. All right. My experience in the military was we would go out on a field problem, and obviously these guns are, are they're too nice looking to be carried out in the field uh, okay. in a military situation. But uh, we would always clean our mm -hmm. weapons as soon as we came back in, just to get the mud and the dirt. So and every time it, after you go out, they every come time. back and you clean. First thing we do is we clean our weapons before anybody is released to go back home or to get cleaned up. In fact, we would clean our weapons before anybody took a shower or any of that. So the first thing you want to do is, um, you want to you want to pick a good a good uh, cleaning rag, and I have to tell you, uh, women's underwear is actually <laughs> one of the best uh, soft cotton cloth. It says it all. Yep, women's you, underwear. Yeah, you know where I'm talking. Okay, so uh, the first thing to do is, especially if you've been out to the range, you want to clean the barrel, and to clean the barrel, you need a brush. So are there different brushes for different sizes? Absolutely. Okay. This is this one is a 44 and 45 handgun. This one is for a 38. 38 is what you're oh, holding there. I have a there. 38. Okay. Yep. You've got a 38. All right. So this this is actually fitted to to run up and down the barrel of of the pistol, and you just do this. Which what what this does is it gets all of the um, all the powder out of the barrel. And sure. You do like the, the same, residue. Exactly. Uh -huh. You do the same thing for each of the. For each of the. There you go. Yep. What is that, a chamber? Uh, that's right, yep. Huh. And if you find you've got a lot of residue, a lot of powder mm -hmm. coming out the end, which if you've got, some, uh, I usually put something down underneath mm -hmm. that, that is in contrast so that I can see the powder as it spills out. Then you want to use something like Break Free or Powder Solvent. All of these items are good uh, for that. Okay. I put those on a patch. Once I've, once I've pushed the, the brass through the barrel, Mm -hmm. Then I do the same thing with a rag with a little with a oh. little solvent on it and that actually you go, you go again. That's right. Okay. Second time. In the military we use a 45 caliber pistol as well as a 9 millimeter pistol. Mm -hmm. I've shot uh, shotguns, I've mm -hmm. shot rifles, mm -hmm. uh, sniper rifles. Mm -hmm. um, and also machine guns, both submachine guns, small compact machine guns and large cruiser weapons. And where do you learn, I mean, do you learn how to use each of these? In basic infantry and basic soldier mm -hmm. uh, uh, training, you get instruction on all of the U.S. weapons. Okay. Uh, in special forces training, you're... Uh, Which you have undergone. Yeah, I went yeah. through special forces training in 1979. You get additional training in foreign weapons. Okay. Because oftentimes you're um, operating in foreign countries training other soldiers from other from other armies mm -hmm. and you need to be familiar with their weapons. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. Did you ever meet a, a weapon you didn't like? No, never. 
Let me, uh, let me just make sure I don't get this dirty. Sure thing. You know, if we're working with solvents and everything, I want to make sure that I'm doing this correctly. All right, so I put a little bit of this. So you just feed it on top. It's a little tighter now. Mm -hmm. Yep. Oh, wow. Go. Okay. And, and then I take it through the other end? Well, generally what I do is push it all the way through. Gosh. There you go. Okay. Take that off and then pull and then it out. pull it out. Okay. And then you do it again. Yeah, you do, you do it for each one. Okay. So. All right, great. The next step is just an overall uh, wiping down of the weapon uh -huh. and, and generally, again, taking my uh, well-used, cloth, well-worn cloth, that's right. <laughs> you just wipe the weapon down, ending with uh, just a very light coat of lubricating oil to keep the weapon from rusting. So you always finish with your, with your lubricating oil. That's right. Okay. So that's kind of that's cleaning a weapon. And so you learn all of this in your training, in special training, special I, forces training? I learned it in, in training in the Army uh, and then follow-on training in special forces. Okay. Right? Cutlery is an important part of the military too. Mm -hmm. And uh, all the way from... Uh, a pocket knife? Well, this is not a... It is a pocket knife, but it's also a boot knife. This is what I wore oh, in the top okay. of my boot in the mm -hmm. event. Uh, mm -hmm. I parachuted uh, for 25 years, mm -hmm. jumping out of airplanes. And sometimes you need a knife to cut something that's in the way or preventing somebody from going out from exiting the door. So uh, I would carry you this. That yeah, you need handy, a need quick, a small, quickly. small handy knife. Uh -huh. Famous uh, Camillus knife, which was uh, kind of standard issue in the 50s, 60s, and 70s. Uh, part of the K-Bar family of knives. The knife that's most commonly associated with special forces mm -hmm. is the Fairborn Sykes knife. And that's what these are. These are these are stilettos or daggers. This is a two-quart canteen. And uh, the interesting thing about this is you fill it up with water for two quarts, but you also wet the inside of oh. this. If you wet the inside of this, put the water bottle back in it, it stays cool. This knife was given to me uh, in El Salvador uh, by my... That's a serious knife. It is. It is a serious knife. So there's a lot of functions, I, I'm assuming, with that knife. Yeah, you can open beers, you can open people, <laughs> you can do, you can saw with it. Yeah, it's got a lot of different, a lot of different. Uh, Most, I, I like that you went right to the beer first. Yep, throwing knives. These, these are examples of a set of knives that you Wait, actually. Wait, so can, you can throw a like you like knife throwing. Yes. Okay. Throwing, throwing. I feel at very targets. safe and yet oddly not so safe sometimes sitting next to you. Finally, uh, this is one of my favorites. This is what my uh, gardener used in Panama, and I used to carry it with me in the jungle for clearing out bamboo. I've been to every country in Latin America except for Chile. I, ne I never okay. went to Chile. Okay. Um, and I travel right now. I still travel for the Department of Defense. Mm -hmm. I've probably been to 45 or 50 countries. On national U.S. holidays mm -hmm. around the world, the ambassador always throws open uh, his or her residence and they serve traditional American food on our holidays. Very nice. One in particular is Fourth of July. I've been in countries where they always serve hot dogs and hamburgers. Hot dogs and hamburgers. At the Ambassador. Very presence. American. Yeah, very oh, American. That's nice. And is it well attended by the communities? Oh, sure, sure, oh, that's nice. sure. That's it's a good way. To, it's a good way to meet people. Food is always such a great common denominator. It is connecting people. It yeah. is. It really yeah. is. One of the most uh, important things to a special forces soldier is his coin. The coin that he's given the mm -hmm. day that he that he graduates from special forces training. I got mine in 1979, uh -huh. and it goes with me everywhere. Oh, that's wonderful. And we're always supposed to carry this with us because uh -huh. if we're caught without our coin, we have to buy a round of beer. <laughs> These are my jump wings. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, a, I'm, I'm actually a master parachutist. I've okay. been to jump master school mm -hmm. and uh, I actually jumped 175 times. Does that just mean you can land on a leaf? Like land on that leaf and you can I jump could, out of a plane and land on I could on land it? in this backyard. <laughs> At the end of my career, I got out of special forces and I was actually building new pieces of equipment. Oh. And I built the body armor that the kids were wearing in Mogadishu during the incident that's referred to as Black Hawk Down. Wow. This is the standard duty uniform, and if I had to, and if I had oh, to, oh, here we go. If I had to go more formal, you know, this <laughs> this would be, be my. Formal. Yeah, this would be my regalia. I wish this I would, had a beer for you as you break break those out. Well, maybe I maybe I should probably buy you one. <laughs> you know, you you need to be able to change your your appearance. You know, mm -hmm. so from time to time I go from oh, that. Oh, let's do it. Yes. I go from that maybe. Uh, 
You know, I could actually wear this headdress. This is the Jordanian Special Forces uh, kiaf that okay. they wear. Okay, all the, right. That was given to me. This is the beret that the, that the Jordanians wear. I've okay. got my own green beret. And of course, now if you want to become grumpy old, uh, <laughs> if you want to become grumpy old uh, veteran, this is what guys who stand on the side of the road and complain about the about the way the country's going. <laughs> Look. Okay. We all have protective camouflage that we like to, that we like to wear. What is some, that one for? Uh, this is this is what a sniper would wear out in. Uh, in really. Yeah, in undercover. Uh, this is the headdress that goes with it. There's also a suit that you wear. Uh, and huh. you could attach branches and leaves to it to give yourself more camouflage, break up your outline. I have to tell you though, that probably one of the most important tools in the military is the ability to have fun <laughs> and blow bubbles. Ah, I like the little, little face on this. My little soldier's face, yep. Can you teach me the alphabet in your language, in military lingo language. Sure, military lingo uh, language, it's called the phonetic alphabet, and it would be as follows. Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, Delta, Echo, Foxtrot, Golf, Hotel, India, Hi. Lima, Mike, November, Oscar, Papa, Quebec, Romeo, yeah. Sierra, uh -huh. Tango, Uniform, Victor, Whiskey, X-Ray, Yankee, Zulu. The reason those letters are used is, is they're, they're specific and they're very distinctive. Yes. So they've turned them no into- No confusion. There's no confusion about Yankee. Everybody <laughs> knows that Y is Yankee. And just remember it's coming up on 10 hundred hours, not 10 a.m. That's exactly right. Mm -hmm. And Veterans Day is at 1100 hours That's right. and 11 minutes. That's right. Let's do a proper salute. Can you teach a proper salute? Sure. Fingers extended and joined. Thumb in. Thumb in, mm -hmm. interlocking. Okay. Held up to the edge of the eyebrow. Arm straight, elbow out. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Perfect salute. Looks good. That's all I do? That's it. That's it. That's so it. I don't, you know, you always see people do that. Nope. No, it's just. Just straight away. Bill, I want to thank you again so much for showing us and teaching us a little bit about what you have done in your life. And we want to thank you again for all of your service to this country. Thank you, Blair. I've enjoyed this day very much. And just remember, every Veterans Day, to hug a veteran. <laughs> you got it. All Here right. we go. Thank you so much. This has been absolutely wonderful. Let's go into the Veterans Lounge. I bet we'll find veterans in there. My name is Bill Beck. Hi, Bill. And I'm a commander of this 1929 post uh -huh. here in Petaluma, California. And uh, This is your operation this here. This is it. This is our little tiny little bar that we live in. Well, we like this because this is where lots of veterans come and enjoy themselves. Oh, yes, they do. Hey. <laughs> I love it here. Everybody has a story to tell. And not only did the Navy meet here, the Army, Marines, and I can't do anything about that. <laughs> do you have a story to tell? I did go on Liberty once in Pusan, Korea. Yes. And while I was there walking down the street, all of a sudden I, I heard a bee go by me. Well, it wasn't a bee, it was a bullet. Oh, goodness. That well, went, they both start with the letter B. Went by we're me. close. And I had a 45 on my hip, you know, so I looked around and I found the guy in the, up in the tree and I, I aimed my 45 at him, but that 45 didn't reach that far. So finally, Marine says, I'll get him for you, Bill. I said, Get him. So he took an M1 and got him out of the tree. Wow. You know what? I never went to Pusan for Liberty again after that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I just stayed in Yokosuka, Japan. You're a smart man. Yes. Thank you so much for your service You're to this welcome. country, and God bless you. Thank you very okay. much. Appreciate it. My name's Scotty Stumeyer. Henry Stewart. When he joined the Army, yes, he was 17 years old. Oh, he ran away from an orphanage and joined the Army. And he was in the 42nd Rainbow Division, fought up through France, Germany, wow. liberated Dachau. Yes. Concentration camp. Wow. He fought in the Battle of the Bulge, the U.S. Army, and stayed in it until 1973. He's done 30 years as a serviceman for his country. Well, we thank you so much for your service. Thank you.
Hi there. I am serving you. Since you have served us, I thought it's the least I could do to serve you. And thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Enjoy, okay? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us on today's show. And if you are so moved, if you'll join me in a salute to our veterans. Until next time, enjoy. dancer at home and uh, we dance and romance. Oh. It's like a parade all on your head, you know. You guys were all in the parade? Yes. Did you, what did you ride on? Whoopee! I'm okay. Uh-oh. What, what are some of the other acronyms that you, that are familiar? I use wire and batteries and you name it, we'll go on there. What else can they, what can they go get? Their imagination. Yeah, that works great. <laughs>